Okay, hello everyone out there in audio land. Welcome to a, uh, another edition of Pints with Air. And I have with me uh, Ryan Berry, our CEO and technical expert on my left side, and Ariel Brown, our designer and chief engineer, down below. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Uh, just in case you guys out there are, are thinking, they're just doing this for the beer. We are. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> Gives us the best excuse, especially since I'm in Oregon, they're in Colorado. We don't get to do this in person uh, very often. Awesome. So this is our substitute. So today our topic, our hi-fi topic is going to be power supplies. Um, and our beer topic is, what's our beer topic today, Ariel? See, so we've got uh, one of our most local breweries here in Niwot Gun Barrel, we're outside Boulder. So we've got Finkel and Garf Brewery. Nice. So it's, it was this, uh, um, it's a really fun brewery. Their, their kind of philosophy is just about having fun and playing and getting out. So if you go to their tap room, they've got games and it's a really, really fun brewery. Um, and it makes them some pretty good beers. Nice. So we'll I really to go enjoy to going time, there. Next time I'm in town, we'll have to go because I haven't been to that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, we usually end up going to Sanitas or Avery yep. or someplace, but um, that's one I, I haven't made it to. So probably a good enough excuse to come out once, you know, airline flights are <laughs> yeah. a decent thing again. Don't, don't hold your breath. <laughs> I, I'm not, but I will hold my beer. Absolutely. I've got, I've, I've got a Cascadia Kolsch out here again for a nice light. It's a hot day here. It's like 82, if you can believe uh -huh. that. Yeah, it was 80, what, 89 here today? It's pretty close to 90 here, yeah, I think. Yeah, but it's a dry heat. <laughs> it's a dry everything. <laughs> it's a dry everything. <laughs> uh, totally. All right, well, power supplies, you know, one of the things that, that uh, Charlie said to me one time, and I, I know it's been repeated over and over, is that basically any piece of audio gear at its fundamental level is a modulated power supply. Um, which means that it's probably kind of important to have a good one. Um, and there are a whole range of power supplies, right? Like we've seen stuff, you know, over the last decades um, of different classes of power supplies, you know, digital power supplies, analog power supplies, linear power supplies. So, you know, maybe starting with just an overview may be a good way to kind of jump into this, even though a lot of our listeners, watchers, voyeurs um, may, uh, may already have a good idea of what those are. Sure, sure. Yeah. And so, you know, first there's, you know, what, what the power supply circuit is supplying. So, which makes a big difference into what, how you design it. So it, is it, is it an analog output stage? Is it a digital circuit? Um, so that right. those factors matter quite a bit. And then there's different styles of power supply design itself. Is it just a IC regulator that you can buy three pin regulator chips and plop it on and you're done? Or uh, uh, like what we do mostly is we do, we do our own discrete zero feedback power supply circuits, which you know have their benefits and not. So Challenges. Um, yeah, I don't know where, where do we want to start here? <laughs> well, so in the in the range of things like there's there's an analog power supply and there's um, there are digital power supplies and there's different versions of each one. So I mean, obviously we could we could talk mostly about what we do in particular, but um, I think a little bit of of why we do it um, or the the differences because there are good there are good versions of different ones and they may be appropriate at different price ranges. For different products or different situations so you right. know you know while we're yeah. you know we have our feeling about what's right for a thirty thousand dollar preamp that's you know that's state of the art you know you couldn't put that in a twelve hundred dollar you know uh DAC, you know and may and right. Right? right it doesn't wouldn't necessarily make sense there yeah yeah and so so to go back to, to charlie's point is that, that you know is for um it, particularly in an analog amplifier, amplifier stage, uh, the output signal is essentially a modulated version of 
uh, the yeah, modulated power supply. Mm -hmm. And so you have a reference signal, which is your musical signal. And if you look at the very last point or, or, or pretty much any point of the circuit, that reference signal is controlling a transistor on, on which end is connected to the power supply. And it's essentially using that transistor to, to amplify either voltage or current mm -hmm. from the power supply. And so if you have a lot of noise um, on that power supply, some of that will come through to your signal. Sure. So the quality of your power supply absolutely translates to the quality of your signal. Right. Now there's been, there's been a big, a, you know, I wouldn't say a big shift, but there, there are a lot of people that use digital power supplies these days. And, you know, when it first came out, everyone was like, oh God, digital power supplies, you're ruining the earth. And, you know, this is the worst thing to ever happen. And, you know, there are people that are definitely still in that camp, but, you know, I would say that, you know, in a global overview, those have gotten a lot better over the last couple of decades. Um, they, I'm sure they still have a number of limitations to them, but um, what's, you know, in your point of view, like what's the primary difference between using a digital power supply in something and using an analog power supply? And it's it just at its basic level. Sure, so, um, you know, a, a linear power supply, which we use for, for um, all of our products, especially our, our analog stages, um, is you know runs straight off of an AC line using a transformer, so based on 60 hertz. And so the main benefits is that it um, since it runs at low such low frequency, it's really easy to filter out um, the noise, and it's not high frequency, which which is um, more difficult to deal with. Right. Um, the 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 drawbacks of a linear power supply is um, really size, size and weight and heat. Um, they're not the most efficient. Sure. Um, but um, they make a huge difference. I mean, the, you know, one of the things that I remember from when Charlie and I were listening to the KXR, you know, we both were scratching our head when uh, the KXR 20 was coming about what we could do to make the KXR original better. And, uh, you know, back when we were first starting to do listening tests, we both were, you know, kind of of the opinion that the KXR was the best thing, you know, that we could possibly make, and there was no way to really gain much out of it. And uh, I think one of the biggest breakthroughs, even knowing how important the power supply is, is uh, when we started looking at the power supply on the KXR and started expanding upon, you know, doing that in a way that was even better than what we had done originally, and just the, the change that it went through just from the power supply alone was just night and day difference on that product. It really kind of started off the whole the, the whole KXR20 upgrade, you know, it was really the stepping stone for us to make that upgrade. Right, right. right. And that was, in, in, in KXR, the change you're referring to were all about the actual, the final voltage regulation. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, just a, so um, we talked about a switching supply as far as the raw supply, uh -huh. the benefits there are, you know, what we just talked about, the drawbacks of, 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 a, of a linear. So size, uh, cost, weight, um, they are far more efficient. And, and so in, in today's um, kind of energy conscious environment, they are getting more and more desirable and, 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 and even by, regulations in various countries in some situations almost necessary <clears throat> right. and so and so you know we we at air you know acknowledge that at some point uh, for s certain products we may have to start investigating that and, and, and actually move there for the right product mm -hmm. um, you know sure. for, I think for our highest end stuff like our R series stuff it, it it will never be the right fit um, you know when we're trying to get the every, eke out every last bit of sound quality. Right. Um, you know, our experience, you're not gonna get that from, from a switching, switching power supply. Yep, so um, switching power supplies, I mean, there's a whole range of both of them too, but I think overall switching power supplies can be made cheaper than linear power supplies. Yes, yeah, yeah, they can be made cheaper and they've, and, and it's, 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 you know, it's 
I call it a newer technology, but it's been around for quite a while, for a couple few decades now. I mean, they're widely used in computers and anything now. Um, and so they are, are getting better and better and better. And so the quality is getting better and better. One of the drawbacks is that they, uh, you know, they are based on switching at a very high frequency. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about audio gear, th th that doesn't mix well. Um, you, right. you um, adding that huge high frequency noise noise source uh, inside an audio product um, is usually not a good thing. Yeah, and, so you have to filter and, that and, out. And you can reduce the... that noise as much as you can, but you'll never get rid of it. Right. Right. So do you try, would you try, or do most people try to filter that then? Exactly, some, yeah. Some way, and then you lose whatever audio bands up in that range as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you just, yeah, yeah, you have to filter and filter and filter that as much as you can. But again, you know, you know there is no infinite filter. Just... <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Nanotechnology. That's right. Um, so, to get a little more in detail of, of, of our of our you know linear power supplies, and so there's the raw supply, and then there's actual regulation. And so, for us, um, uh, particularly for any of our critical, what we deem critical um, power supplies, uh, we do our own discrete zero feedback regulators. Uh -huh. Um, and you know, it, it's, um, feedback is, 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 is especially common within regulators and, and for good reason. Um, but when we've, and we've gone back and played with this several times and whenever we've tried it, um, even if it's feeding a digital circuit that really shouldn't have very much effect on the analog sound. It always does, and we always prefer uh, um, I'm a zero feedback discrete regulator, even if it's feeding, you know, um, well, especially if feeding a clock circuit. Um, now, you know, when we're talking about just 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 some of the basic logic functions, um, uh, you know, we we won't we usually don't supply that with with our fancy regulation. Sure. I mean, that's one of the things that we've always paid a lot of attention to is where it makes a difference and where it doesn't. Yeah. Because you can go crazy on a lot of stuff that doesn't make that big of a difference and allocate your money other places where it does. And obviously for us, the linear power supplies um, are really important. Right. Yeah. And like we talked about last time, you know, when we were talking about clocks, um, the, uh, the oscillator circuit is one of the most critical points um, as far as the, the power supply regulation. Right. If you don't get yeah, that so right. That I mean, you're really tempting when you're designing a product, you know, when you're thinking about a product, though, it's going into something digital, and so it's not as important as the analog, but really it can be the opposite in a lot of times where you really need to make sure that the closer to the source you're going, the more, the more care you're taking with what's going into the circuit. Yeah, and, 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 and the thing that it's not as obvious and, and probably very good to think about is that, um, is that the power supply often, you know, feeds a lot of, a lot of points of the circuit board and, and there's often ground planes so or couples on the ground plane. And so if you have, even if you um, are, even are just doing a, a regulator for, for just a small section of the logic circuitry that's just controlling the, um, it, it was just controlling uh, the, uh, the user interface and the display. Um, because that can be a fairly widespread network, um, that, you know, can, can, um, can parasitically um, um, uh, couple into the rest of the circuit board, even the critical audio points. So, so, right. and, so and, and so, you know, to get even deeper into power supply design, the actual circuit board layout and where those planes and where those traces are laid out and what they're next to um, is, uh, cannot be overlooked. <clears throat> right, that's, that's interesting because I wouldn't have thought about that. that I mean, obviously that's, that, see, it all makes sense, but um, that's very, you know, it shows how integrated the system is. And as we all know, all those little things make an audible difference. So 
Now, uh, right. So now in some of our products, we do single regulation in different parts and other places we do double regulation. Um, you know, yes. what's, what's the basic advantage of doing double regulation? Why would want somebody want that? Why would uh, you typically do a double regulation just to um, reject and reduce uh, more of the power supply ripple. And so, you know, when we're talking about a linear power supply, again, like I mentioned, you know, we're, we're starting at 60 hertz sinusoidal waveform coming out of the wall. Mm -hmm. And you rectify that, you get 120 hertz. And then the regulation, when you have a voltage regulator, you're essentially trying to get rid of the ripple um, from that basic re rectification. Okay. So typically you have rectifiers and you have some filter capacitors that reduce the ripple quite a bit. But then uh, every, every stage of regulation will then, get, will, that, will then reduce more and more of that residual ripple. Okay, so um, could you just talk about ripple for a second for people who don't necessarily know what that is? Sure. Um, yeah, what, what causes yeah. that? So, 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 um, remember ripple. so if you have, um, so when you're talking about um, a linear power supply and, you, and, and, and you're converting from AC from your wall, so at 60 hertz, but basic rectifier circuit um, essentially converts that to um, um, 120 hertz um, uh, waveform. It's not sinusoidal sodal anymore. And so um, at that point, if you had no filter capacitors whatsoever, um, uh, you would have, I mean, you, you call it 100% ripple, but it's basically um, whatever, whatever the peak voltage. Um, and, and so the ripple is basically the measure of of, of the, the, the variation, the peak to peak variation of your DC voltage rail. Okay. And so, you know, you know, so a typical value after, after, after the first rectification and a filter capacitor might be, let's say a hundred millivolts. Okay. Um, and so then a, uh, the first regulation stage might reduce that by 60 or 80 dB be pretty good and so that's you know that's going to get that 100 millivolts down to to you know like you know uh, um microvolts okay right um but there there, there will still be you know a, a difficult to measure but measurable mm -hmm. um uh, 120 hertz ripple there and so you know if if you are doing a very critical circuit or if you're uh you know a very critical analog Amplifier or preamplifier, particularly stage, or or a um, or or a oscillator circuit where you want to get rid of every last bit of it, then uh, uh, and then double regulation, you can get another sixty to eighty dB of rejection of that ripple. Right, and then you're down to nanovolts. Right. <clears throat> okay, that's yeah. Wow, that's that's pretty cool to think about. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so say so in the in the power supplies in some in some cases we have we have power supplies that drive different parts of the circuit, and the transformer is going to be part of well not necessarily part of the power supply circuit although maybe technically it is but the power yeah, supply the, the transformer itself and the windings play an integral role and are used differently for different circuits that we do. Um, so I I know that you've talked before about how we use a certain winding to power one stage or one portion of the power supply and another winding to do an, another portion of the power supply in the product. Um, right, right. So, so, so yeah, we'll, we'll have different um, 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 separate regulators dedicated to per certain parts of the circuit. And then we'll also, and then we'll usually often have different windings on the transformer for again, dedicated to different general sections of the circuit so we'll often have a a winding just for the analog stage we have another winding just for the logic circuitry and another winding just for the just for the the actual digital audio circuitry depending on the product uh -huh. um, so again that 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 reduces um power supply noise coupling between those between those between those sections of this the actual circuit and so again, we're just trying to reduce um, 
uh, any potential noise, let's say, generated on the logic circuitry. We don't want that shared with the analog audio or the digital audio. And so as far upstream as possible that we can, that we can um, separate those, those, uh, those sections of circuit, the better. <clears throat> sure. And so, you, you know, and so one, you know, one of the ultimate ways to do it would be to have separate transformers. So that, so that the only thing they have in common is the AC voltage coming in. Right. Like the QX5. The QX5 has quite a bit of that. We have four so separate transformers exactly. in the QX5. Yeah, that's amazing. To look inside that, that product is, <laughs> is pretty awesome. Um, cool. So last, one of the last uh, recordings we did was about um, the uh, digital clocks. And we talked there about having external clocks versus internal clocks. So you see that often with power supplies as well. You'll see a product that has an external power supply uh, versus, you know, the majority of products that have internal power supplies. And I'm sure there's pros and cons to that as well, not the least of which is, which is price. Because when you do an external, you've got a whole chassis, you've got cables, you've got all this other stuff that goes into that dramatically increases the price. But yeah, and I, think that's, I think that's a pretty big key factor there. I mean, because... Yeah, you can do an external power supply, which we've done both internal and external in the history of there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of lot of pros to making that box external. Of course, like you said, you know, to do it right, it gets expensive. You know, we're not talking a wall wart that you plug into the wall and, you know, have a switching power supply that feeds power up a wire into, into our boxes. We're talking an entirely dedicated chassis transformer mounting and everything and then the connection between the two devices you know that all adds quite a bit of money so you know we don't we don't want to have extra costs where it's not justified is the biggest thing is you know if if it makes sense where you know obviously the product would benefit strongly from having that box outside of the unit that'd be a consideration we'd make but uh you know we wouldn't just do it just to say oh you know it's high-end audio we'll throw in an external box in every product and call it a day because then the customer has to pay more and they're not really getting the benefit out of it. And that's not our goal. Right. 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 So, the, right. So the, the, the primary benefit of, of basically separating the power supply into a separate chassis is basically, is to basically move that noise source and the noise source is further away from the critical analog circuitry, be it linear or switching. Um, you know, there, there is noise generated. So in the case of a linear, you know, you know, there is the, you know, you know, the, the rectifier ripple and its and its um, noise source, as well as the transformer itself, especially with a big linear right. transformer, actually does actually create a magnetic as well as electrical field. And so, if you don't deal with that properly, um, it can it can um, cause problems on your circuit board and and your analog circuit. So. It you know there are benefits to getting that as far away as possible mm -hmm. from the analog circuit. Yeah, I remember the first air product I ever owned, the K1 preamp. It had its external power supply. I think the D1 did as well. Yeah, the D1 did. Yeah, the K3. Uh, K3. Sure right. Just those three products. Yeah. yeah. Now in that case, does that that obviously you're connecting those with a long cable, um, you know, yes. a couple meters or whatever. That's part of the circuit at that point, right? And is there, it is. is there a disadvantage to having that? You know, I know every, everything's like, a, you know, degrees of, of uh, positives and right. negatives, right? So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that case, I mean, most of those cases, anything done in, in that external power supply was generally, um, was generally um, raw voltages coming in and then they were regulated locally uh, okay. in, in the, the main box. And so, and so there, there were very few drawbacks to actually um, you, you know, you, you, you're having that uh, that long connection in that case, <clears throat> right? It's so if it's regulated, where, where it's regulated inside is actually where it kind of becomes part of the circuit. Sure. sure. Yes. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and so, but it, currently we pretty much do everything internally. Um, you know, and in some cases, like with the KXR. You know, it's it's got its shielding of the chassis inside with the the cutouts and the milling that we do. In other cases, the uh, the transformers and the power supply are just in the kind of in the same open case in there. But we've found ways to shield and and do that. 
yeah, yeah, we 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 have improved. We we have improved um, 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 uh, some of our shielding techniques. Um, uh, one of the big factors is we've improved some of our circuit board layout techniques to actually reject a lot of that um, 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 uh, potential potential pickup of those of those noises. Um, we've 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 also changed um, transformer styles, which which is um, in terms of that noise is 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 kind of a plus and minus. I think we'll, I think we'll probably talk talk about transformers in a separate separate issue. That's a pretty big topic. Yeah, that's itself. a pretty big topic on its on its own. Um, but it's it's slightly more it's slightly easier to, to control um, uh, the EI um, transformer versus a Toyota transformer. Uh, Toyota Toyota's yeah. <clears throat> that makes sense. Um, one thing that we did a, a, a top or a topic of another video was balanced, and obviously in the circuit board design, the balanced circuitry also helps reject any noise that would be yeah, absolutely from there. That's a big, big help inside the products. Right, and so and so not just that it's that it's that it's electrically balanced that that the circuit board layout is very physically balanced. In, in fact, that's very mirrored in its layout such that anything that's picked up should be equal equally picked up in each phase and because it's a differential circuit it then gets canceled out right <clears throat> right so yeah <clears throat> that i that's we obviously spend a lot of time on this it's a big part of what we've done for 25 years and and the linear yeah. analog power supply balance circuitry with all the additional tweaks and pieces we put together is what we find ideal. Um, yeah. Kind of our current nightmare would be a be a uh, a onboard digital power supply that switches, and we have to try to filter out internally on a on a product. Um, that would be that would kind of be your own personal hell, wouldn't it, Ariel? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I would agree with that's that. That's some challenges. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not my, it's, yeah, it's, it's really not my idea of a fun day. As Ariel said, you know, there, there's, you know, there's reasons that you can't just ignore the technology either. So, you know, there are, there are some strong arguments to do switching power supplies. You know, they, they do run cooler, you know, and in small boxes, for example, you know, you have a much cooler running box. I know heat can be a deterrent for some people and people worry, yo, was my unit running too hot because of the linear power supplies and is it cooking my components, which, you know, in all reality, it's not because those components are designed to take quite a bit more heat than what we ever subject them to. But, you know, it is, it is a little, it's, it's a little off putting for some people to feel like, you know, a small box like the codex, for example. Yeah, is, that, you know, that's what came to mind for me because yeah, when we first- the guy right here, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty small and with a big linear power supply in them, it gets kind of toasty. And you know, it's, it, it can be a little distressing for people not being used to that linear power supply type of setup that you know, have a box running that warm. So you know, it's not damaging anything inside of it. And we know that it sounds much better that way. But you know, there's, there's strong arguments to have you know, that smaller, you know, more efficient, cooler power supply you know, inside the unit. And, you know, if we ever have to approach that, you know, it's going to be a lot of discussion and a lot of design and a lot of innovation, of course, as always, to make sure we do it the right way. But you know, it will be some challenges. Yeah, I think the power supply takes up half that codex box, doesn't it? <laughs> Just about. <laughs> it feels <laughs> it like half it. its size if, yeah. we, if we did a wall yeah. warrant and a digital power supply. Right. <laughs> yeah, which is the case of pretty much any of our products. I mean, I mean, you're talking about the, you know, the, you know, uh, you know, uh, the transformers and then the filter capacitors. It's it's usually a very significant part of the, the physical size and the cost of the product um, is a, a large factor. Of that is, is is our linear power supplies. Yeah, because you know it's really important to keep in mind, as Ariel's already mentioned, it is a balanced power supply. So it's not just you know a linear power supply; it's a balanced linear power supply. So you know it's takes a lot of components and a lot of room on the circuit board and since we do it discreetly we don't have you know one chip that does all right it's, it's you know many pieces that go into the puzzle to make sure that we get the best that we can out of it right yeah the other one i the other um what i always find amusing you know when we came out with the mxr i think 2006 
-huh. and, and you know, one of our initial design constraints was a very small, sexy package. <laughs> and um, and with that, uh, that was a uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into getting everything to fit in that okay. package that we predetermined. Right. Yeah, I think so, one of the, but, I think one of the, the only uh, ever big requirements I've ever heard Ariel pass down to me on design is is we have to design the circuit before the chassis from now on instead of the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> Release the transformer. Right. Release the transformer. <laughs> but, but 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 that product, you know, you know, we were able to, you know, squeeze, you know, three hundred watts and eight ohms, six hundred watts into four ohms, uh, power amplifier into that pretty small package and, yeah. and, when we, and when we came out with that every, every question that um, 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 whenever I went to trade shows and I know everywhere else which question was you know oh you've gone to a switching power supply or a digital amplifier no nope, that's it's a completely linear power supply linear analog amplifier and no one could believe that at first yeah, that's actually why we started was, displaying those with the with the clear plates on them, so people could see the inside. Right. Was, so, no one believed this. Yeah, yeah, it took a lot of creative thinking, both within and outside of air, you know, to make sure those work. You know, we had uh, the transformer company we were working with, Mercury, and they had to think of really outside of the box to make those even happen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. yeah. No, that's that was that's still one of the coolest products on the planet mm -hmm. for sure. Um. Great. Uh, so, I mean, power supplies are a big topic. We've kind of touched on a lot of it. Are, are there other things that you want to talk about? I mean, there's there's so much more you can talk about power supplies as far as like the actual voltage regulation, um, right. circuit design. I I don't I don't think we that's, want to that's go time, there too that's, much that's, right that's now. A, that's another that's another beer. That's another beer. Another yeah. time. I, I'm sure. Like as we go through these videos, we're going to revisit power supply stuff. Oh, sure. You know, throughout because it right. is so important. It's yeah. It's yeah. We could actually, uh, I'm a yeah. We could actually like we could probably dive dive specifically into power supply. Well, well, into into voltage regulation. Yeah, we'll put, that in the we'll put that in the super geeky category on our YouTube page. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the general audio fun that that's that's getting pretty deep. Right. Which you will say that that our that, that our preferred you know voltage regulation mimics quite closely our analog amplifier circuit topology. Uh-huh. Not to give away too many secrets, but it's very similar. But it yep. makes sense, right? Because they're yep. they're both doing more one feeds the thing. other. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the amplifier stage sounds good and parts that because yeah. So the what feeds that. Right. Awesome. Cool. Well, great uh, great session. Cheers to, uh, to analog linear power supplies. May it long may they live. Indeed. While we're... <laughs> Great. All right. Well, thanks for joining us out there in audio land. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any questions, email us at pints at air.com. I'll put that up here on the screen. And uh, subscribe to our channel. So we're going to keep doing these videos whether uh, you want us to or not. <laughs> All right.